Hey, this is going okay. So multiply through. So we're doing 3.38. What's the plan for today? We got to do, we got to finish up 3.3 three, and we're supposed to do um, 3.2 and 3.4. Word problems. Oh, all right. Were you guys in a word problem mood when you woke up today? It's like, I hope there's word problems in math class today. All right. Maybe not. Well, we got them for you. So, um, okay. So elimination method, name of the game is make the two X's or the two Y's be opposites, right? Same number, one positive, one negative, so they'll eliminate when you add them. That's why it's called elimination. It's also called addition method. What do we have here? I'm going to bring, um, I'm gonna bring the top one down. So we have got 8x minus 9y is 32.5. The second one is minus 8x plus 28y is minus, what is that, 42? Okay. And then we... Add them up. So if you add these guys up, these cancel, and you get, what is that, 19y? Right. And this is minus, I don't know, what is that? 9.5? Thank you. Um, it's going to be a half, huh? Okay, so 19y is minus 9.5. Last step, divide by 19. Yeah, that's just minus 0.5, right? What's that? Oh, yeah. If, yeah, when you do it, you got to make sure you enter the top first when you divide in your calculator. Yeah, if you did the bottom first, you'd get two. So t top divided by bottom, you would enter in your calculator. Should be negative 0.5 on that. Is that good? We getting that okay? Now, what do we do once we get one answer? Plug it in. Plug it in to get the other, right? So we've got Y. So now plug that in. Uh, where do you plug in? Anywhere you want, right? I'm kind of... I'm running out of room. Here, let me just, I need this space for the plug-in. So let me just come over here and just go divide, divide by 19, divide by 19. So come up here, going to plug in y is minus 0.5, because that comes out minus 0.5. So now you got to plug it in, go wherever you want. I'm just going to grab, say, the first equation right here. 8x minus 9y is 32.5. Grab that y and plug that in. 8x minus 9 <clears throat> times negative 0.5 is 32.5. Good to there so far. And this is 8x plus, is that 4.5? 32.5. And then we're... Are we good to there so far? I just plugged in the negative 0.5 for the y, solving for x. So subtract 4.5 from both sides. And we get 8x, and this is what? 28, like that. And then last step, <coughs> divide by 8. Reduce that, let me see. Um, you divide top and bottom by 4, and you get 7 halves. Or, I don't know if they want a decimal. Probably decimal is fine. 3.5? Mm -hmm. I think they want decimals on this one. Yeah, so just divide 28 by 8 on your calculator. Yeah, and you get um, 3.5, right? So there's the y value. So we got the, or that's the x value, isn't it? So we got the x, we got the y. So the answer to the question is 3.5 for the x minus 0.5 for the y. That's the x and the y. And we're good. Is that good? Questions on that? Y'all okay with that then? So the only trick on this one, the only extra trick was the rearrangement step number one, right? We had to rearrange them, get x's first, then y's on the rearrangement step. No questions? We all good? Let's eliminate word problems slowly. So let's get through this so we can get to those word problems. All right, so yeah, that's this is a good one though. Let's do this one. So three a minus b equals twelve, and four a is b plus two. Okay. So the main issue on this one is go go ahead and just distribute. You know, through these parentheses, get three a minus three b is twelve, right? And then. Um, what are you going to do with that, that second equation, the 4a equals b plus 2? 
Yeah, you got to rearrange it, huh? You guys with me? That's always the first thing to do. Get, get A's, then B's, then numbers, right? So that means you've got to take this B and really jump it to the other side of the equal sign. What happens when something jumps to the other side of the equal sign? Changes the sign, yeah. So, so it'll become minus B. Is that good? Become minus B when it jumps over there like that? So, or you could just, you know, it's the same thing as just subtracting B from both sides, isn't it? If you prefer, you could do that. That's the same effect. Just subtract B from both sides. Okay. Now, we've got them lined up. And so, you know the, the game plan. Why don't, why don't we just do the front letters? How about, you could do A or B. It doesn't matter. Just so we're all on the same page. I think I'm going to do A. So, can you make both these A's become the same number? One positive, one negative. In other words, opposites so that they'll cancel when we add them up. They'll eliminate when we add them up. Mm -hmm. What could you make both those A's into by multiplying? 12. Make them both into 12. Huh? Just multiply by the other guy, right? You just take the, you know, the 4, you multiply that in the top equation. The 3, you multiply that in the bottom equation. Got to make one of them negative, though, huh? Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter which one. I usually make the top one negative. So go ahead and multiply negative 4 through that top equation, if you want. So negative 4, negative 4. Negative 4 in the bottom equation by 3, right? You can take it from there. So we're making the fronts become opposites. Take it from there, see what you get. So then, coming up here, get negative 12a plus 12b equals negative 48. And we get 12a minus 3b equals 6. Good like that? Now the fronts are opposites, right? So you can go ahead and add them and get them to all cancel out there. So keep going. Give you a second. So once you get A, or well, you're going to get B first. When you get B, then plug back in and get A. Okay, add those up. These cancel. What we get here, 9B is minus, oh, is it ugly? Mm -hmm. Minus 42, I didn't realize. Okay, so um, we're good to there so far. Then we divide by the 9. That's not nice. That reduces a little bit, right? You can divide by 3 top and bottom, kind of clean, but it's still going to be a fraction, huh? Right, you could divide by 3. I didn't realize it does this. Divide by 3 top and bottom, so we get what? Minus 14 thirds. That's as good as it's going to get. It's not very nice. So we got B. Is that good so far? Now, does anybody remember what do we what could we do? Yeah, we can do a restart. You don't have to. I mean, if you're real good with fractions and comfortable with that, you could just plug that in and it will work, you know. But if, if the first answer is a fraction, yeah, we did that last time, right? And the first answer is a fraction, instead of plugging in. Instead of plugging in, do a restart and cancel the other letter. You know what I mean? You, you, you change which one you cancel. So right here, notice we canceled the A's. So just go back and get the B's to cancel instead second time. So just go on back and change your mind on the canceling. Can you do that? Yeah. Uh, the, the problem is that's going to be a decimal that goes forever. You do that in your calculator? Yeah, I mean, I just 
it'll be four, negative 4.6 is forever, right? Well, as soon as you round, then you've got a different answer. That's the problem. Yeah, if it was a decimal that ended, that would be fine. It's a decimal that goes forever. So we really have to do the fractions. So, yeah, so you're going to have to restart. Is that okay if I erase the left side and do a restart? So come back here then. And now we're going to do the restart. Because, the, again, everybody see why I'm doing that, right? Because the first answer is a fraction. So if the first answer was not a fraction, like the last one, you know, my first answer was just a nice little decimal, negative 0.5, a decimal that ends, that doesn't go forever, then I just plug it in. No big deal. But if the first answer is a fraction, you could, like, like I was saying, if you divide that in your calculator, it'll be negative, what was it again, 4.6 is forever. And that's a problem, right? We can't, the, the decimal goes forever, and you can't be rounding because that changes the number. So we're stuck with a fraction, and we don't want a fraction, so we restart. All right, so come up here, restart. And on the restart, let me go back where we were. We had 3a minus 3b is 12, and we had 4a minus b is 2, right after we rearrange things. So now, this time, instead of getting the a's to cancel, make the a's, you know, be opposites like we did last time, this time we're going to want to make the B's be opposite. So look at these two B's. What, what could we do to one or both of them to make them become opposites? What would be the easiest? Well, let me, let me, give, you, Brad, let me give you 30 seconds. Don't say that loud, please. Give everybody a chance. Let me give you 30 seconds. Go ahead and so, so do that. We've got to make the B's opposite. So what would be the easiest way to do that? Multiply the, the bottom by negative 3. We all, we all good with that? That's exactly right. Because there's really a negative 1B there, isn't there? Everybody good? Because that negative 3 times negative 1 will make positive 3B, which is the opposite of the minus 3B. Then you'll be able to cancel them. We all good? Just so want to make sure we're comfortable with that. So then um, what do we got? 3A minus 3B is 12. The bottom one is minus 12A. Uh, plus 3B is minus 6. Add them up. This would be minus 9A. These guys cancel. And this will be 6. Like that. Good. We got that. Last step. Kind of run out of room. Divide by the minus 9. Boom. So it's 6 over minus 9, which if you reduce that, divide... Top and bottom by three. It's a minus two, and I put the minus on the front or the top or whatever. It doesn't matter. You know, with a minus on a fraction, doesn't matter top or bottom. Not both. That'd be positive, but right. So six ninths becomes two thirds. So it's negative. So B or A. I'm sorry. That's A, huh? A is negative two thirds. So we're done. We got it. B is negative fourteen thirds. A is negative two thirds. Our answer to the question then is A first, then B. A is negative two-thirds. B is negative fourteen-thirds. A, B. Things I can answer on that one? Uh, is that good? Is that okay? You okay with all that fraction stuff? So when your first answer is a fraction, it's easier to restart instead of plugging in and get the other letter to cancel. When you, when you just plugged it in and you worked it all out? Yeah, and you got it to work out? Yeah, it didn't come out as a fraction. Like three times the fraction by the number it came out just as a fraction. Oh, because it's just multiplied by three. Yeah. That was actually a nice one to plug in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can always plug in. Sometimes they're awful. But you're right, I didn't notice. If you plug that in with that three, it just cancels it right away, doesn't it? Yeah, this wouldn't would have been easier to plug in, actually. I didn't notice that. Yeah, either way, it's, it's right. Good. All right. Okay, we got fractions. So what do we do when the problem begins with fractions, like right off the, the bat like that? Get rid of them. Yeah, just get, out of, get them out of there, huh? Yeah. So what's going to get rid of them? 
Multiply through by the denominator, right, 10? So go ahead and do that. Multiply through by 10. So 10, 10, 10, and then the bottom one also. 10, 10, 10. So we'll give that a try. In, in the middle, they will cancel, right? Good to there. What needs to, everybody okay there? Ever see how we did that? Multiplying everything. What needs to be done now? <coughs> Got to rearrange. So go ahead, rearrange. So to take that bottom where you want X's first, then Y's, then numbers. Remember when you rearrange them, the sign comes with them, right? Go ahead and rearrange that bottom one. So that negative on the x, and there's there's nothing in front of the ten y, which means he's really positive, huh? So swap the order on those two, rearrange them. What do you get then? Ten x minus one y. Is 250 rearrange the bottom minus 1x plus 10y is minus 250. Is that good? Rearrange. And now, make, uh, what do we do? Now we need to make the fronts become opposites, right? You need these guys to be opposites. Yeah, so take it from there. So, got rid of the fractions, we rearranged them, now we're kind of in the normal mode of making the fronts opposites. <laughs> Feel free to check with those around to see if you're getting the same answer if you want. So that could you get the 2,500 on the bottom there when you multiplied the 250 by 10? We all, we're good with all that? Okay, so now we can add them up. X is canceled by design on purpose. We made that happen. 100Y minus 1Y, 99Y, and minus 2,250. Mm -hmm. Divide by 99, and here we go again, huh? Ugly. Um... Yeah, does that reduce? Oh, you can divide by 9, huh? Right? Yeah. Uh, you could divide them both by 9, can't you? I think, or does that just go in? Yeah. Oh, what is it? Wait. Clean? No, it's not clean. Not clean? Can't you divide them both by Yeah, you can divide them both by 9. Yeah. The final answer is 250 over 9? 
Two of them were 11, right? Yeah. That's what's confusing me. Everybody can say nine. Not only nine. Yeah, I have that one. Yeah, so divide, both, divide top and bottom by nine, and you get minus 250 over 11, right? Yeah. That's the y value, which is still ugly, and I'm still going to do a restart. It is. Yeah, it is. They're perpendicular. Right. So um, we good there. So we got the we got the y. Now how do we how do we get the x? We're gonna plug. Well, we would normally plug in, but um, I'm gonna restart because it's a fraction. Because the first answer is a fraction. I'm gonna restart because that first answer is a fraction. Said okay. So go back up, restart. Uh, now, oh yeah, now where will I restart? I when I say restart, I'm just going to go right to here, right? You see what I mean by that? When I say restart, I don't want to go back to the beginning where we had fractions. I would just have to get rid of them again, and I don't want to mess around with where I had to rearrange things. I mean, right from here where I first made these guys opposites. Just go back to right here, and instead of making the x's cancel, make the y's cancel. So I'm really not going all the way back to the beginning where I had to rearrange things and get rid of fractions. Just go right here, right before I got things. Yeah, just go, yeah, maybe let me say it better. Just go the step before you canceled things. That's where you want to go. Here's where I canceled things. Go the step before that. So, so when I say restart, I really mean step before canceling. So the step right before the canceling. Go there. So that would be right here. And instead, let me let me change what we do there. Let's just go back here. And instead of making the x's become opposites, I'm going to make the y's become opposites. So what am I going to multiply by? 10 again, but this time the top equation, huh? Is that good? Multiplying through that top equation by 10. Then this is minus 10y and plus 10y. Those will drop out. Good. So come on up here. So what do we got? So we got 100x minus 10y is 2,500 minus 1x plus 10y is minus 250. Add them up. This is going to be, what, 99x. These guys cancel here in the middle. By design, that was our plan. Make that happen, right? And this is 2,250. Last step, divide by 99. Looks familiar, doesn't it? Reduce it. It's just positive, the same thing. 250 over 11. There we go. That was a pain. Is that okay? A lot of work there. A lot of tedious work. Questions I can answer? You all seem like you're still taking it in. You want me to leave it for a second? Anything I can answer on that? We good? All right, I'm going to move on if that's okay. So I want to get to the change in our word problems. Let me see. Um, okay, so they're, they're giving me... In fact, I should just make... Whoops, I did the wrong one. <laughs> Try again. There it is. All right, so here's question number, this is, this is number 11. Oops, just did the wrong thing there. Well, I don't want to write there. So this, this is question number 11 in section 3.3. All right, so a bunch of decimals. What, what gets rid of all those decimals? Multiply them by 100, huh? 10, 100,000, numbers like that move decimals, don't they? We have to move everything two places, don't we? So multiply through by 100. You don't have to. You can leave the decimals if, if you want to. I think it would probably be a little easier to get rid of them. So I'll multiply through by 100. That will become 5x, 25y, and this side will be 4,400. This will be 15x, 5y, 4,800. Is that good there? So just get ready. If you've got a bunch of decimals you don't like, just multiply through by <coughs> 10 or 100 or 1,000 or those kind of numbers. How do you know which one to use? However many places you want to move the decimal, that's how many zeros. 
Did you catch that? I wanted to move all the decimals one, two places to get all the way to the right. That's what makes it into a whole number, right? So two places, two zeros, 100. Two places, two places. I moved all the decimals two places, made them into whole numbers. Now, can I just go dot, dot, dot now? I really want to get to the word problems. The rest is normal, right? Well, what would you multiply by? Negative 3. See, then these are opposites, and blah, 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 blah. Away you go. Is that good? I think we better do some of our time to spend it on word problems. So I'm going to flash off that, if that's okay. Everybody see that first step? Just get rid of the decimals by multiplying through both equations by 100. Then it's pretty normal from there. All right.